All right, part two, quick, and I mean quick, 10 minutes. Let's stick to 10 minutes this time. No more. <laughs> Follow up on the Hustler Fast Track SDX for 2022. And a few, few things that I like, a few things that I don't like. But overall, she's a keeper so far. So far. All right, what did I have to do? I had to make a couple more tweaks. Uh, let's start with the arms here. The control arms, when they were all the way forward, it would track straight, but one arm was twisted just a little bit. Uh, about, I'll say a little bit, probably a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. It was noticeable. So when you're going down a road, one bar was forward a little bit more. And uh, another thing that caught my attention is, of course you know or may, may not know, the uh, arms here, when you put them in the neutral position like they're in now, it also engages the, the parking brake. And when it was in that position, this one right here, there's there's about, I don't know, 16th of an inch of slop down there, right? So when it was back in this position, it was starting to ga engage the reverse hydro. It wasn't moving or anything, but you could hear it putting the strain just, just a little, little, little bit, a little bit. So I went underneath, tweaked the linkage on the hydro, and then of course came up here and adjusted the stops. You take, a, I forget what size, 5 eighths or something nut, and then there, you use a, a T-handle or Allen wrench, and then adjust the bolt to stop this from moving forward. So I've got it all the way up. One of them was not all the way up, so the, the linkage was kind of messed up. So I adjusted this on both sides, so now you can fit about a, a credit card in there about a credit card's worth of gap both of them are forward like that and uh no more noise when you go into neutral and they both they it tracks goes straight and it seems like it gained maybe another mile an hour speed i don't know the butt dyno tells me <laughs> it's a full 10 miles an hour now anyways minor minor detail but something with me and my ocd caught and had to had to make that adjustment or else you know you won't sleep at night <laughs> What else? Oh, previously I mentioned that these were quarter of an inch. These suckers are three eighths inch thick. And I mean, the deck is, there's, there's a mixed bag of 11 gauge and seven gauge and, you know, reinforcement and the, the deck here, the front reinforcement here is solid. So I don't foresee there being any issues with this deck. It's a real solid deck. Um, minor modifications, as you can tell, I removed the pulley covers. A uh, couple little rubberized little wing nut doodads that hold those in place. And I also removed this bolt here in case you ever need to access or remove or lift this panel to get underneath for whatever reason, like a belt jumps or something. And you don't have tools with you, you just pull that bolt out now. This thing is not going to go anywhere. And it's a solid panel. So actually, you can take one of those little wing nuts from the pulley cover. Take the bolt out, flip it around, come in through the bottom, and then screw that wing nut on so you can have a little handle if you want. All right, what else? Um, seems to be about it. I'm really digging the... I, I love the Kawasaki engine, the FX691 Donaldson filter. I did pull the filter out, inspect it. I always wipe down the canister. I mean, sure, there's a little dust from the factory or whatever, but that's just me. And I reset the filter into the proper position. A lot of people don't know that inside of these filters, there's there's three little notches on the filter, and there's three little notches inside here. It's not critical. Don't lose sleep over it. Don't even pull it out to inspect it if it's dirty. You can do more damage by removing this filter, by looking around inside, allowing dirt to get in. Leave it alone. But next time, it, uh, align up those three notches inside it just lets it see a little, you know, sixteenth of an inch more. Not a big deal. Some guys fight with these end caps, putting them on and stuff. They should just go right on loosely and snap very easily. Yeah, I put a filter minder in here. I got one of these John Queer, what do you call it, filter minders. Last time I went into the John Deere dealership down the road, that whole story why I won't buy a John Deere. Thought about buying one, what, last year? But uh, they said I'm a troublemaker and all this other crap. Well, good for them. They lost my business. But a uh, filter minder, I wanted one of these. Just, you know, what the hell? Why not? So I put that on there. We'll see if it works. Worth the shit. <laughs> There's the muffler down there. One thing I don't like, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'd let you guys know. There's a muffler. There's a carburetor. Now, there is a heat shield, half of one 
built into the top of this muffler. And I wish they just had another metal heat shield up in there that would separate some of that radiant heat coming up. It would hit the shield and, and blow off the sides instead of soaking into that muffler right there. Yeah, the metal pan's going to get warm, but that muffler's a lot more surface area, a lot more metal, and that just that just stays hot all the time. And that's, that's going to be a, a great heater, but not for the carb. Uh, some guys were having problems starting these things after, uh, after they're warm or hot, trying to start it back up, and it wouldn't start up right away, and I wonder if that's an issue there. Uh, fuel filter. There's one down there. No, it's hard to see. But then there's also one right there. I'm like, what the hell is that? I saw it in a previous video. I didn't, I didn't know what it was, but that's a breather filter. Because you remember, previous video, there's a switch there, and I've got dual tanks. Uh, dual, also dual reservoirs. We'll get there in a second. But dual fuel tanks, and it requires a little breather. So they put a, a little cheap filter, fuel filter, and there's a hole in this, this frame right here, and it just sticks right in and drips out the bottom if there's any condensation or whatever, and keeps crap from getting up inside. Thought that was cute. But yeah, still, like I said, previous video, got dual reservoirs for the ZT3400s, and I love that. And other than that, man, this thing is, uh, it's rocking. I like the tires, I like the ride, the suspension seat's nice. Uh, if you guys see online, eBay, Amazon, this little orange handle from track seats, don't buy it. It is not the same, I'm telling you now, it is not the same suspension seat that thing's a joke and they're a pain in the ass to deal with anyways this this one is has a decent suspension seat and the one with the dials a little bit better but i don't think it's twelve hundred dollars better so let me open this up real quick and glance down inside get a nice little overview while it's still shiny and new um, plenty of room in here you can get to the hydros batteries right there full-size battery Decent wire looms. I mean, I think in my previous video I mentioned, um, let me see if I can adjust here. This little bar here, the silver, it says Excel on it. Um, there's one over here on each side. Whenever you move these arms, that is adjusting the linkage on this arm and it goes back to that spring right over here, just above the fan. And that's how the parking, gate, uh, parking brake is engaged on both sides. So it's pretty cute. And then there's also uh, dampers in there to control the movement of these arms. Uh, the Skag was just as smooth, uh, or I should say the Hustler is as smooth as the Skag. I really like them. There's a lot of zero turns that got some wompy friggin' control arms. Bobcat, um, I almost said Big Dog. It's not Big Dog, it's, it's the other one. The other, the other dog, what's it called? Bad Boy? Yeah, okay. Those things are crap. I just, I just don't like them. There's like too many, too many knobs and stuff, and you, and you just, you twist this arm, and the friggin' things, I don't know. That's if you, if you like that, great. But that's not for me. These suckers are solid. So I also adjusted the height, and you can adjust the angle of them here. So like I said before, these things are a dead nut straight. Adjust the tracking. It's everything's dialed in now. So. 1.6 hours, that's just me driving around, breaking stuff in, parking it, looking for leaks, you know, checking everything out, wiping stuff clean. There's no, so far, so good, no issues, knock on wood. So, uh, yeah, other than that, this thing is freaking, it's stout. I'm probably going to go with a block-off plate here if I can find one. I'm not going to go for the full mulch kit, maybe if the price is right, but I don't think I really need it. I just want to keep stuff from shooting out and hitting the windows. Because when, when you put that deflector on the discharge shoot cover thing that thing sticks out like a foot and a half it's it's giant but uh so far so good one other thing looking at this spring that's a good size spring there of course you need it for the deck lift uh these are supposed to be little cast i don't know about these i might put chains on there i don't if i have issues with those yeah i'll swap them out but mentioning the springs on the back there's next to the idler pulley there's a, a tensioner with a spring on it right underneath the bottom that spring looks a little weak for my likings. I wish they would beef that up. But overall, man, I'm I'm digging this thing. And uh I just I just can't wait to mow with it. Oh, deck leveling. Like I said, I haven't I've engaged the PTO, but I haven't mowed with it. But the, the pin is on three, it's three, like spot on, all the way around. Deck is leveled, that's great. Um I may pitch it up just a little bit, we'll see. And they also make a kit for the front. Uh, to keep blowout. I know that was an issue with the skag. The skag, man, <laughs> all those holes in the floorboard, man, oh, 
dry conditions, dust would just come right up. It, you'd get covered. I'm sure I'm going to get covered in this, but the skag was really bad. Can you tell I don't like skag anymore? This is, <laughs> this is a replacement. All right, guys, we're over 10 minutes here. I told you I'd keep it short, short and sweet. If you have any comments, leave them below. And like I said, you know me. If there's any issues with this thing, uh, I'll, I'll post a video. I'm not going to hide anything. No one's sponsoring me. Not I paid for this with my own money. But if you're a business or dealer and you've got a lawnmower that you want me to review, find some problems with it or areas that uh, could be beefed up or something, send one my way. I'll give you an honest, unbiased review. Not a problem. I just enjoy this stuff. Anyways, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care, guys.